Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show. I have my dear friends Ginger and Sean on today. Hi guys. Hello, Hi. thank you for having us. You're not just, you know, my friends. You're also basically revolutionizing the experience that patients have who need to send their eggs, sperm, embryos to long-term storage. You're doing you're doing stuff that I wish has been around for the last 15 years. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. I mean, this it's a problem that we've been facing. I've been facing as an embryologist, and I wish there was a company that solved these problems. So I'm just here to provide support for our fellow embryologists. So Sean, just share a little bit more about yourself. I'll have Ginger go next, and we'll talk about CryoFuture and what you guys are doing to help patients. The biggest thing we're trying to do is we're trying to solve the problems of storage issues. The problem really differentiates into two perspectives. We have a problem in terms of the patient side where storage cost is really going up due to limited space at the fertility clinic. It's really putting a lot of pressure on their IVF treatment cycles over years. Patients have less transparencies in terms of how the specimens are stored at their fertility clinics. We wanted to try to provide that kind of a transparency to the patient. Another problem with the clinic perspective is that the clinics have been operating in the same facility locations for the past 20 to 30 years, and it only makes sense that they're going to run out of space eventually. And so we're here as a modular support structure in the local area to help alleviate that pressure on their side. Traditionally, a lot of these storage facility has been located outside, this, outside the state. So the closest one from California is Nevada, and the best method of transportation is using FedEx or UPS. And it's really difficult logistically to send thousands of specimens through a FedEx. And not that, not that it's not the most reliable method, but I'm just saying that it's logistically and not most cost-effective method. And so what we're trying to do is basically acquire feature is really here to solve the problem of the shortage in the space and the transportation issues where we are deployed in the close proximity to major fertility clinic centers. And so we are within driving distance, but we have close relationship with the fertility clinics. If there's a transfer that needs to take place, our team technicians will drive over to the clinic, pick up the specimens in person. And during that process, the specimens never leaves our eye and comes back to our source facility. We're also trying to increase accessibility to the fertility clinics where, hey, I need the specimens tomorrow for a transfer. Then we're there because we're physically able to do so and our staff is trained to provide emergency services to fertility clinics. Also, on top of that, we're trying to create a transparency to the patients where they have an understanding of how the specimens are frozen, how it's stored, or are the tanks safe, the conditions of the situation. That's just kind of the problems we're trying to solve for the IVF industry. And you're doing a great job doing it. And Ginger, you're an expert also in this field. Tell us about your experience as well. I've had 15 years of experience in cryo management. Um, I manage the storage of frozen eggs, sperm, embryos, and their transportations. So if I've had a lot of experience in, in anticipating all the pitfalls and the success, and that's where we have put in all we've learned as an embryologist Sean and as a cryo manager, and we put this in our company. Yeah. And you guys are so nice. And I think that's another problem is the customer service aspect. Just like knowing that people can call you and coordinate things so easily. I just think it just, you know, what my patients are doing is they're trying to create love and they want to make sure that someone loves their samples and specimens and cares as much as they do. And I know you guys really do. So that definitely comes across. So thank you. We understand what we're handling and what we're providing a service for the clinics and for the patients and what they, what it means to them. And so we do understand the concerns of the questions about their safety. So we've built a lot of processes in place and we want to provide that assurance that we understand the anxiety and the stress that goes along with IVF. We definitely want to alleviate that by providing that white glove service to them. So white glove service obviously means you're hand carrying things, but what about for my patient who let's say lives in Texas and she's just worried about her samples getting on a FedEx plane, for example, what can you guys do to alleviate her concerns or their concerns? All of our cross storage tanks are retrofitted with GPS tracking locations, live temperature monitoring, tempers, it's secured. There's no way for other persons to get into the tanks. And so when the specimens are shipped, we have an understanding of where the dry shipper is. If any of the temperature goes out of range, 
then we will be notified. The first thing we'll do is geolocate exactly where the specimen tank is, and we'll continuously monitor how it goes. When the problem consistently arises, our, one of our technicians will actually go directly to that GPS location with the backup tank and switch out the tanks and hand deliver the specimens from their own. Someone is watching over their specimens 24 seven as that specimen is being carried on the plane and up through a FedEx delivery. How secure is the hand carry option? What if the car flips over, God forbid, or something like that happens? We do put our shipper tanks inside a mini vault in our trucks. From there, so if there's an accident, your embryos, eggs, and sperm are safe. They're fire rated so that the vault is, if in case the car was to catch in flames, your embryos are still safe within the vault. Yeah. And the thing is like patients ask these questions, what they've gone through is very dramatic. So they're thinking about those worst case scenarios. Like what if this, what if that? So these are questions that I often get. Yeah. It's, Absolutely. it's unlikely things to happen, but if it does, we're, we're prepared. We understand that there are accidents, potential risks, but we put a lot of processes in place to mitigate some of these risks that may or may not happen. But if it does, your specimens are safe. So I want to do this little game with you. Safe, not safe. Because I get these wild questions from patients because they're so curious about the worst case scenarios, and I get it, as to what could happen if there are different natural disasters. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> okay. Are my embryos going to be safe or not safe if there's a flood? Safe at Cryo Future because we have strategically located in a non-flood zone, a highly elevated in the San Mateo Bay area, so you're safe. Okay, let's do this. Fire. Safe, because our tanks, our tanks are inside a vault. There are fire resistance over sprinklers, and we have fire stations nearby within the five minute distance to help protect us against fire. Earthquake. Earthquake. Safe. <laughs> Your tanks are stored in a vault, and it's retrofitted to make sure that if any of the uh, debris from the ceilings or the walls cave in, the vault would protect the tanks from being destroyed during the earthquake. Some really weird, like Ocean's Eleven theft. Like someone's going to come in and steal my embryos. Safe or not safe? Safe. <laughs> <laughs> I challenge Mission Impossible to break into our safe. <laughs> yes, we're harder to get in than the Pentagon right here. There's five point access security points. You have the badge in, key, biometrics. There's no way anyone can come break in here. Not even Spider-Man. <laughs> I love that. Okay, how about atomic bomb? Atomic bomb. Safe. <laughs> we might not be safe. We might not alive, be alive, but your embryos will be alive in the tank. So if a patient of mine wants to work with you, like how does she start? Any patient or clinics can reach out to our future, send us a message with the patient's information, your date of birth, and then we will communicate directly with the patient's cells and the clinics to get the specimens transferred to prior future in time for their treatment. We can coordinate the entire thing. The entire process will be seamless and easy for the patients and the clinics. That's what we're here to do. We're here to make the lives easier for the entire IVF communities and support that structure. Is there anything else you want to share before we wrap up today's show? We have all these experience and just being able to express it in such a way to communicate across to the patients of how much we understand what this means to them and their families and their cycles and the clinicians as well. We want to impart that confidence in, in them. We have the experience and the concern and the care. Right. I've been an embryologist over a decade. I understand how those embryos are created, processed and thawed and frozen, the entire process. And so what we're trying to do is trying to make everything 10 times better than what it is that what we're doing or used to do at a fertility clinics. And where can people find you online? You can find us at cryofuture.co. We have an Instagram handle, cryofutureinc, and you can find us also on LinkedIn at cryofuture as well. Well, thanks guys. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sharing about your passion. Thank you for making the experience so lovely for my patients who even need their embryos on site with a snap of a finger. You guys make it happen seamlessly. You make us feel so loved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Thank you.